So I've been doing a lot of thinking lately, a lot of healing, and um, some things came to mind today while I was thinking. I am I'm attempting to learn some new stuff, and it seems like after every lesson that I learn, I needed to take a nap. I was just exhausted. Um, couldn't stay not present, but I couldn't stay awake, I couldn't stay focused, I needed to take a break, and uh, no amount of coffee in the world was going to help me. <laughs> um, and I started to wonder why that was. Typically when I was uh, younger, and before I had started you know, my healing journey for real, like, I think I've always been doing healing, but like, um, the older you get, the, the more your healing journey changes, the more hopefully in depth you get with it. Um, and this past year, I've really focused on doing like a, a dopamine detox, if you will. Um, I've really taken into consideration what high levels of emotions and um, expectations and um, just tension or adrenaline that had been driving my life. My childhood was full of trauma. Um, some of it really obvious, like my father passed away when I was three and uh, my mother left my life when I was five and Previous to that, my life with her was uh, nothing short of scary at times. And then I was raised by my father's mother who had... The nice way to put it is uh, emotional disturbances from her own past. And um, her parenting skills were pretty non-existent. Um, she had five children of her own, but she wasn't as present in her children's lives as she was with mine. It's like, once she got uh, custody of me, this was her chance to have a doll that she could make her own. And I am anything but somebody else's um, plaything, I guess is a good way to put it. I, I, it's hard to control me. <laughs> um, if you've tried, you know what I mean. Um, which I think might be a good thing. Um, maybe it's a bad thing, I don't know. Um, so for this last year, I've really focused on letting go of a lot of past trauma, a lot of past pain, and even current expectations I have for myself. Uh, as a child, I would receive punishment for being sick, you know? I would be yelled at and called names. and You know, it was really a terrible experience and so now like I, I still find myself like asking just at least myself now permission to be unwell permission to take a nap permission to sleep when I'm tired um, I'm disabled currently and um, even still I, I find it difficult to give myself the space to heal to genuinely feel the things I feel I've, I've you know, I'm a cancer survivor. I have a couple of chronic conditions that I manage. Um, and when they flare, it's, I feel disappointed in myself still. I feel um, like I could have done more or that I should be doing more or that it's not okay for me to take that space to heal. And, you know, I've been working through that amongst many other things this year. Um, but one of the things I realized today is that um, I've really uh, been living with it in a high functional depression. Um, if you've known me in my past, I don't think that you would have, unless you got really close to me, I don't, I don't think you would have noticed. I, I'm the number one supporter of most of the people I know uh, from my childhood, especially. I was um, a positive influence on everyone's life, you know? And I was 
always excited to do something, um, hated sitting still. I was always trying to uplift other people. Um, I was, you know, never liked to see anybody down. I never liked, you know, there was always something you could say to somebody to help them improve their mood. Not toxic positivity, but like, hey, did you notice this awesome thing about yourself? Don't forget. You know, or um, I was really safe space for other people to lay their problems in front of. Um, and so I never thought, you know, I wasn't really sad. So I didn't really think I was depressed. Um, but over the last couple of days, I've really been focusing on what the feeling of happiness is. What the feeling of joy, contentment, peace. Um, and I had to be honest with myself. I, I was equating thrill with happiness. I was equating elation with joy, and those are not the same. Um, I think for various reasons, I was afraid of happiness, of allowing happiness to enter my life, but I also didn't know how. I hadn't experienced a lot of happiness. You know that people, when you do healing, we always talk about, or it's always spoken of, like, you know, you have to vibe at a certain level or in a certain frequency to attract that. You know, you want to be abundant, then you have to, you know, experience abundance as a frequency inside of yourself first. If you want love, you must love yourself first. Um, and I have no problem loving things. That's not a problem. And so I was never really sure why things weren't aligning for me in a way, you know, you, you hope that things will align in a good way. <laughs> um, and I realized that I was attracting careers, attracting interests, hobbies, uh, experiences, friendships, even relationships that were not aligned with, with happiness because I was always, um, excuse me, I burped it there. Um, I was never happy. I mean, I had been happy at moments, but uh, it's like I tried to erase those things. Because to feel happiness and then not experience happiness anymore, you, you have to admit how sad you are. And somehow being sad meant kind of like the end of happiness, the end of things, you know? Um, losing my father so young, it, it felt like a death all the time. And um, if you experienced a death as a small child of someone important to you, um, or even, you know, any time, but specifically um, as a small child, it becomes a functional part of your day. It, it becomes a piece of uh, how you operate. And it can be a positive or a negative thing. Like I always, you know, never, never wanted to leave an argument on a bad note because you never know if you're going to see someone again, you know. I always knew that, you know, you reach out to the sad person even if you don't like them. Because, gosh, I don't, I don't know how I would feel if I was the last person someone talked to before, you know, something bad happened to them. I couldn't bear an, an experience like that. Um, my father was my best friend and maybe, you know, my only friend. I did not have a lot of friends growing up. I had a lot of people I helped and then who would just kind of carry on their way and go live happy lives without me. Um, and I never really knew why that was. I just kind of, you know, you deal with it and then you try to make new friends. And you move forward and you think, eh, next year, uh, maybe 
you know, after elementary school, maybe middle school will be better, maybe high school will be better, maybe college will be different. And um, there were points in people who were valuable and who made things a lot more bearable. Um, but most of the time, I felt very alone. And I could never really understand why. And um, I'm starting to understand why. Um, I'm starting to do things that uh, I previously would never have attempted to do. Um, I'm one of those people where if I can't be really good at it at first, you know, if I can't at least get a B or a B plus the first time I try, I'm not doing it because there's a lot of things I can do where I can just do it and I'm good, but I don't feel anything while I do it. It's, um, I'm good at it, great. I don't have to feel bad about myself. Um, and I didn't realize that was part of my functional depression. Um, you know, I'm naturally gifted at really a lot of things and um, it just wasn't something that I understood was affecting me so gravely. And I do mean gravely. Um, my life became this orchestration of avoiding pain, avoiding sadness, only doing things that I was already good at, but that didn't bring me any joy that didn't bring me real happiness. It brought me neutrality. It sat me in front of people who would tell me that I did a good job, that would tell me that I, you know, excelled at this thing. But inside I was empty. I just wasn't hurting. And um, I thought that's what happiness was, right? <laughs> I thought that happiness was um, the experience of the lack of pain. Not that there was, you know, more to it. And the deeper that I get into, you know, um, healing, which a big part of my healing this year has been readjusting my baseline to dopamine. Um, the dopamine both that I experience from others and that I um, exude as I experience certain things. Because even dopamine and a dopamine rush and exhilaration and thrill, that's not happiness. Um, I'm starting to understand that happiness is the ability to remain open and allow excitement to enter you and to, um, like I don't know, express or experience joy with either an experience or a thing or with yourself or with another person. And, um, I don't know if it was necessarily that I was afraid to let those experiences in because uh, the first time I lost that, it was so painful. Um, or if it was just, I don't know, was, that was probably a really large part of it, honestly. Um, that separation from things that brought me joy and real joy and real happiness was such a painful experience um, that I didn't want to experience it again didn't want to do it again so um, being complimented and feeling neutral was good enough for a really long time until it wasn't and um, there's a lot of very weird and depressing things that happen obviously, in functional depression. That's why it's depression. Um, you know, there's not no amount of quote-unquote joyful experiences that bring you joy because they're not your joy. You're not attracting the experiences that will bring you joy because you're not open to the experience of joy. You're open to the experience of the lack of pain, which is just neutrality. And that's very, very different. You know, life is meant to be up and down, you know, not just down or neutral. There's supposed to be a rise somewhere. Um, and this was really obvious by, you could, I mean, from the outside, if you were well versed at spotting this in people who are very good at hiding it, you know, you, you could see that in the partners that I chose for myself, in the careers that I chose for myself, in the friendships, and the way that I helped people. Um, 
is all very, very obvious, um, looking back. And the more interesting thing to me is looking back at the things that really brought me joy and how long it took me to understand those experiences, you know? Conversations with people that really warmed my heart. That I was confused. Um, what is this? You know, it, it's for sometimes decades. <laughs> that's, you know, that's so strange to me. But this all came about because, like, I'm starting to learn something. And I'm not very good at it. But I like it. And typically I would, and I have, I've attempted to do this specific um, activity a lot. And I'm not very good at it. And I'm learning. But it makes me so happy. Um, it makes me really, really happy. You know, the, the idea of the end goal of this activity makes me very happy. Um, the idea of maybe excelling at this activity makes me very happy. And even if I don't excel at it, it makes me happy. But I'm not good at it. <laughs> Yet. I'm getting better. Um, and so I have to deal with real frustration too. I think that's the other side of, you know, my specific type of, you know, functioning is that I don't like things that frustrate me. When things frustrate me, I find myself agitated. And when I'm agitated, I have to confront my lack, and my pain, my adversities. And so today I was doing a lesson for this new activity and um, it was a an interestingly difficult for me to understand concept. I mean, I think a lot of people struggle with this specific concept, um, which the activity itself is not important, nor is the concept. It's the idea that when you find something that frustrates you or that's difficult, how does your body respond? How does your nervous system respond? I wanted to go to sleep. So I laid down because I'm honoring where my body tells me to rest. Um, which is also really scary for me, honoring what my body requests of me, despite what other people say, um, because I need to. I need to build trust with myself. And, um, but I couldn't fall asleep, and I really started to consider why my body wanted to rest. Was it that I was genuinely tired? Was it this was overwhelming? Was it, you know, just time to take a break today. You know, I had completed a lesson and I was gonna push to, to do two lessons. Was that too much for me? Am I getting old? Is it hard for me to learn now? Um, and I don't think that's what it was. I think it was genuinely that I was learning. It wasn't something that came natural to me. It's something that I actually have to study and not study based on like adrenaline and excitement that, oh, hey, I'm gonna be really good at this so it's easy for me to um, address this topic and I have a group of people around me you know I've learned very complicated things in my life and helped other people learn them too but they were easy for me to understand from the get-go they were I had the adrenaline and the dopamine from the people around me studying in a group um, the praise and excitement coming from others as I helped them navigate things they didn't understand you know, there's a certain amount of dopamine you get when people um, thank you for helping them. You know, that, that praise that, oh, I did a good job because I helped someone move forward. Um, and I think that's part of how I've always just gotten by in my life was helping others move forward. So it made me feel like I was moving forward, but it wasn't. I was still stuck as that little three-year-old still not understanding why something I love was gone. Watching people move forward and why again was something that I loved or that I thought I loved gone. Why was someone leaving my life again? And today I thought that it was important to share this. You know, functional depression is strange 
people can think you're the most outgoing, fun-loving life of the party, and secretly, you don't feel any of that. Um, it's weird, but I'm learning how to be happy, uh, which is a whole, like, different experience when I start to genuinely engender the feelings of happiness, of joy inside. Um, it scares me. Uh, You know, it makes me flutter in my chest. It's, um, feel like it could throw up. Um, it's, it's really weird. And I just, I didn't realize, you know, functional depression, it's a depression, for me anyways, of like a suppression or depression of the good emotions. And I've gotten so used to having a baseline of neutral to negative that being open and welcoming and being able to hold space for those positive things is um, scary for me. It's interesting. I'm looking forward to having more capacity to do so. Um, but it was a huge realization to realize that I was holding myself back from happiness and then wondering why I wasn't happy. I mean, obviously, right? Um, you know, I've, I've spent my life um, being really positive because I knew what it felt like to have loss, to have pain, to live with it. And now, you know, after spending nine months really focusing on letting myself be sad when I'm sad, tired when I'm tired, not using adrenaline to push myself through, um, not using thrill or even the f fear, fear of missing out, you know, what's aligned for you will come for you when it's time, but you have to make that space ready. It's like when you are having a baby, you prepare the nursery. And inside yourself, when you're really trying to give birth to who you are, you have to prepare the space inside of yourself to have the capacity to hold on to those experiences and have them. Not push them away, not rush through them, but, but have them. Experience them, be in them. And, um, like I said several times now, it's been an interesting journey over the last year. Um, there have been some very honestly deep and dark days where I have had to confront some of the depths of the pain in my life. And I do it hopefully fairly gracefully um, and there are days where I confront the anger of the mistreatment that I have experienced and there has been a lot of it and hopefully I do that gracefully as well but if I don't I'm also okay with that right now I'm okay with making mistakes you know, not grievous mistakes obviously but even perfectionism is, is part of that functional depression. If I'm perfect, then I can't be sad. There can't be anything wrong, I'm perfect. I didn't make any mistakes. And that is so painful. To even hear myself say that, that's so painful. So, Even though I'm not, you know, doing some of the things that I had previously done, like 
currently I have zero desire to make music, which is okay. It actually makes me happy, <laughs> which is so crazy because like I have sang since I was born. I've been playing the guitar since I was eight. Um, I have loved music my whole entire life. And it's not that I have lost the love of music, it's that I am okay not doing it. I'm okay learning something new, I'm okay doing other things. I'm happy. I'm genuinely happy. I mean, I needed to take a break regardless um, for several reasons. Um, but the new things that I'm learning, are it's, it's making me very, very happy. Um, the new level of like openness that I'm experiencing is, this is what happiness is, you know, like, I know how to be grateful, I know, I know how to do all of these things, but happiness was, you know, just, just beyond my grasp. It wasn't anything that I could ever sustain. I was afraid of success because success meant the fear of losing success, of falling, you know? So it became safe to be neutral, to be average, to avoid making mistakes, but never really like move forward. And, um, in embracing my flaws, my mistakes, and embracing, you know, the learning process, and embracing rest, and, um, setting new boundaries for myself, I'm making the space to have the capacity to feel joy, to have the capacity to feel happiness. And, um, not that everybody needs to do what I'm doing, but I would definitely encourage everyone to do a bit of a dopamine detox, to make more space for themselves, to have the capacity for the simple things. Like I've always enjoyed stopping and smelling the flowers, sitting with trees, being still. Um, I pushed that away a lot in college. I think a lot of people do. <laughs> Solitude hasn't been something I disliked for the majority of my life, you know? Because in solitude, I could be neutral, you know? In solitude, I didn't have to, like, make the space inside my heart, you know, for happiness to live alongside the grief. And, um, the past couple of weeks, I've really been allowing myself to just, you know, for a little bit of time each day, sit in, in real happiness. You know, to put it in perspective, like, I never got a birthday gift that made me happy. <laughs> like, I was grateful, I was, I was, you know, there were things that I wanted. But when you talk about, like, letting the happiness tingles live inside you for a few minutes, to genuinely feel alive inside, I wasn't letting myself do that. I would get embarrassed if I did those things, I would feel, you know, a sense of, like, weird shame, almost. And, um, I'd go into shutdown, honestly, because it was too scary to let that in and to experience that on a real level. Um, and I think that that made me miss out on things in the moment that made me happy. And there were a lot of things, you know, it's easy to remember the trauma. And for a lot of people, it's it's really hard to remember the good things that happened in your life, unless they were like incredible feats, you know? And um, my memory is no different than that. Like I forgot a lot of things. I 
except for the painful things. And um, I'm starting to have things come back. I'm starting to uh, put things together that made me happy, that I really enjoyed doing as a small child. And uh, they genuinely make me happy, the things that I remember. And that's good. And um, some of the things that I remember that, that you know make me happy make me sad because they're not... Um, you know, they're not around anymore. Like, I didn't realize how much joy and happiness that were was between my grandfather and I. And uh, he passed away uh, almost 20 years ago now. Um, and it makes me sad that it took me so long to realize how similar we were and, you know all the different things we could have experienced, all the things we did where I just, you know, was more in a place of confusion than I was in experiencing that joy with him. Um, and there are other people and places and things, you know. And, um, it's encouragement to not let those things happen again. Uh, and hopefully I won't be so confused when I find things that make me happy. Like seriously, if you've ever seen me experience what would have made me happy, you would have been like, what's happening with her? She looks so confused. <laughs> she looks like she's searching for something. Because I literally was like, I don't understand this experience. What is this? Um, and I hope that's not the case anymore. Anyways. I'm not really sure, you know, who or what this is for, um, but I was, you know, moved to speak about it because I don't think I'm the only one who lives like this. That lives from thrill to thrill or, you know, excitement to excitement or, you know, giving to giving to giving um, in order to feel like something positive happened to feel like um, something good is happening. It's about opening up and being vulnerable. It's new. It's interesting. I kind of like it though.